my God. <laughs> Laking parusa nun, di ba? Hindi ka na nga kumain. Tapos <laughs> tumaba ka ba? What's up, Ketchup? Yo, 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 mga kabayo, and welcome to Inai. Thank you. This is a time and space where we learn life lessons from lessons about life. So, anong pag-uusapan natin ngayon? Kung naalala ninyo, sa first episode, pinakilala ko yung channel ko, Inai Thank You, where we use Mother Nature as our guidebook to having better lives. And then in the next episode, do natin diniscuss yung five natural sciences and how these sciences help decode the language of Mother Nature. So, kumbaga, science yung ating tulay para maintindihan natin kung ano yung sinasabi ni nature sa atin. Now we're going to unleash the science in us. So, una recap lang tayo, why the science exists? So, science exists to discover the truths about the universe. Yung mga katotohanan tungkol sa ating universe. So, let's keep this word in mind for now. The word truth. Marami kasing ibig sabihin yung truth, depende kung ano yung pinag-uusapan nating truth. Because we are able to discover the truths about the universe, it helps us make better sense of our physical observations and experiences. Kunyari, may building dito, tapos may tao sa ibabaw, tapos tumalon siya, waaas, nalaglag siya, pfft, namatay na siya. So ikaw, bilang nakita mo yun, what conclusion can you draw from that? Tatalon ka pa kaya palabas ng building? Pero wag ha, wala. W- wag tayo magpapakamatay ha. That's an example of gravity. Gravity is one of the truths about the universe. Because now you have a better sense of your physical observations or experiences, dahil nakita mo yung tao na yun tumalon at namatay, it now increases our chances of survival. Kung gusto mo pa mabuhay, hindi ka natatalon palabas ng building. Kasi alam mo na pwede mong ikamatay yun. The gravity exists. Gravity is a truth about the universe that can kill you from a certain height. That's what science does. Discovering the truths. These truths help us make sense of what we observe, therefore also help us increase our chances of survival. So ngayon, bakit science? Why not religion? Why not politics? Why not philosophy? Balik tayo dun sina sinasabi nating truth. Diba? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin pag sinabi nating truth when we talk about science? We are talking about objective truths. Objective truths, which mean that there is no room for debate. Nope. No room for debate. Nope. Gravity. Meron pa bang tao ngayong magsasabi that he or she cannot perceive gravity or cannot sense gravity or cannot observe or experience gravity? It's, it's a very universal truth. All 7 billion people, we can observe this. It is one that can be observed using your physical senses. Your physical senses plus perhaps tools that enhance your senses. Tulad ng mga bacteria o mga virus, doesn't mean they don't exist. Just means that our sense of sight has limits. Since the invention of microscopes, now we're able to see them and now we're able to discover th- this truth that there really are viruses and bacteria. At kahit sino, pwede tumingin sa microscope at makikita nila yun. At masasabi nilang, oo nga, may virus, may bacteria. So ito yung tinatawag nating objective truth. No room for debate. Whereas for religion, a lot of people have different religions. They believe in different gods. So you don't really know who's telling the truth. You don't know if all of that is true or if any of it is true. Philosophy deals more with the study of knowledge, of existence, and reality. There's just so many questions about that. So brang dami. Science has a method creatively called the scientific method. <laughs> oh, magbigay tayo ng kwento. Kung kunyari, meron akong kaibigan, nakita niyo yung mga picture niya, tapos, oh, parang lumaki ako ha. Ano yung nangyari doon? The first step to the scientific method is to observe. So, meron siyang observation. So, yun yung nakita niya. Anong ginamit niya? Anong tool yung ginamit niya? Kanyang paningin. Kanyang mata. Yun ang ginamit niya. That's the tool that he used to see that he gained weight. That he got fat. Next. Paano kaya magpapayat? Because you observed that you gained weight, you identify that as a problem, now you ask, how do I solve this problem? And then what are you gonna do next? 
Experiment ka na ba agad? Papapayat ka na ba? Paano mo malaman kung paano magpapayat? Usually, magtatanong ka muna. Either you base it on your previous experience, kung may mga kaibigan ka na mataba noon at pumayat, kung may mga kaibigan kang trainer, nutritionist, doktor, tatanong ka sa kanila. Pwede rin namang hanap ka ng scientific journals that point you to how to lose weight. So, anong ginawa natin? Initial research. Based on nakuha mong impormasyon, anong susunod na gagawin mo? You're going to come up with a possible explanation. Mukhang sinasabi nila dito, yung pag kumain ka ng sobrang dami dun sa pangangailangan ng katawan mo, nakakataba yun. Gagawa ka na ngayon ng possible explanation na kung binawasan ko yung pagkain ko, siguro, papayat ako. So, yan na yun. Give a possible explanation. Give a possible answer to your problem. Ano sumunod? Paano mo malalaman kung tama yung sagot mo? So, test your explanation. So, testing mo ngayon. Anong gagawin mo? Eh di, magbabawas ka ng pagkain. Lahat ng ibang aspeto ng buhay mo, hindi mo binago. Natutulog ka ng 8 hours, tulog ka pa rin ng 8 hours. Kung nag exercise ka araw-araw, exercise ka pa rin araw-araw. Ang binago mo lang ay yung dami ng pagkain kinakain mo. Tinesting mo na siya ngayon. Tapos, syempre, may resulta yun. Ba? Observe and then interpret. So, dun sa kwento ng aking kaibigan, after some time, lumit siya. Ang interpretation niya sa result niya is, pumayat ako dahil nagbawas ako na kinain. Yun lang naman yung binago ko eh. Wala na akong ibang binago sa buhay ko. And then, of course, publish. Let everyone know. Ba, guys, pumayat ako. Oh my God, I'm so sexy now. Pag nakita ng tao yung resulta mo, anong tatanungin nila? Uy, anong ginawa mo? Paano ka pumayat? Diba? How did you get that result? And then, that's when you're able to tell them what you did so that pwede nilang gayahin yung ginawa mo. Tapos, na natin kung makukuha nila the same result. So, ganun gumana ang science. There's an observation. They ask a question about it. They look for information related to their question. And then now they try to give a possible answer to their question. And then they will test if indeed that is the answer or not. Paminsan, nagbawas siya ng kinain, pero paano kung yung naging resulta niya is tumaba siya lalo. <laughs> Or yung iba, pwedeng wala nangyari. Hindi sila nangayayat, hindi sila tumaba. Paminsan, dun sa observation mong bagong yun, iba siya. It's different from your expected result. So that means you go back here and then you ask another question. Bakit kahit magbawas ka ng kinakain, hindi ka pa rin pumapayat? May bago na ngayong problema. You can do more research about that. Then you can give a possible answer about that. They're in chronic stress, so pwedeng nag accumulate pa rin ng fat dahil stressed sila. Stressed from the food reduction because the body perceives it as stress. That's one possible thing. And then they observe, kung tumaas nga yung cortisol levels, it's possible that it promotes fat storage. And so there, you're now able to share that and publish. And then you're able to discover another truth, which is, it's it's not straightforward that you just eat less and then automatic papayat ka. Ang dami pa palang ibang factors. Ganon yung kagandahan ng scientific method. It's a cyclical process and at any point in time, you will always, always hit this part observing. Of course, as scientists, gusto nating malaman eh, di ba? Woo! Totoo ba yung ginawa mo? Sige nga, gayahin ko nga. And because of that, nagkakaroon ng sariling check and balance system ang scientific method. It is a process that really allows you to arrive at the closest approximation to the truth. Pag inulit-ulit mo siya, tapos you always get the same results. You repeat the exact same experiment and you get the exact same results kahit sino pa ang gumawa nun, kahit iba-ibang tao ang gumawa nun. What does that mean? Is that not an objective truth? Kaya naman sinasabi natin, approximation lang. Approximation meaning we cannot say that it is the absolute truth. We can never say that it is absolute. Never. We can't say it's absolute. Bakit? We can't. Because you can't do the same experiments forever and ever, infinite amount of times, and be sure that you will get the same result. 
Kasi malay mo, somewhere down the road, gumawa ka ng experiment na yun. Exact same experiment. Tapos iba yung naging result. So that's why we always say it's just an approximation of the truth. Kasi pwedeng magbago yung science eh. It also reveals changes. Yung mga pwedeng magbago. Sa isang bagay na akala natin, yun na yung totoo. Pero yung pala hindi. That's why this is what we use to uncover the truths about the universe. Tulad nung sinabi natin, we can't use religion. If we use religion, then perhaps what would you give as a possible explanation for you gaining weight? Nako, tumaba ako kasi tinukso ako ng demonyo. Tinukso ako ng demonyo. Sabi niya, kainin mo yung cupcake. Masarap yan. Kainin mo yung cake. Kumain ka ng pizza. Kumain ka ng candy. Uminom ka ng soft drinks. Masarap yan. Can you test that explanation using the scientific method? What senses do we have that can confirm the presence of, of, of a devil, of an evil spirit? So that's why religion is out of the question. The truths about religion, I'm not saying that what religion is saying about all these saviors and gods is not true. It's just that the truths that they profess cannot be subjected to the scientific method. So that's why the scientific method also only really talks about the truths of the physical universe, okay? Yun lang, physical universe. If it's metaphysical, metaphysical means it's beyond the physical. It's, it's beyond our senses. It cannot, it's not capable of answering that. Which now brings us to how do we know what we know? Science also has its limitations. So this man right here, his name is Rene Descartes. Okay, and Rene Descartes sort of came up with this statement. Now, how do you know what you know? Paano kung niloloko ka ng senses mo? In other words, science has limitations because our senses have limitations. Our understanding has limitations. Our tools have limitations. The integrity of science is also based on the integrity of the scientist, of the researcher. May, may mababalitaan tayo pa minsan, di ba yung iba na, di ba, binabago nila yung data nila. Or kung yung nakukuha nilang result, hindi naaayon dun sa inaasahan nila, hindi nila ipapublish yun. Data manipulation. Selection bias. When they pick out people or subjects for their study, may bias na kung sino pipiliin natin. Hindi random. Sabi nga natin, the technology available is limited. So ngayon, ito lang yung tools natin. So you can only conduct your experiment in a certain manner depending on how much budget you have. Another thing is conflict of interest. So ito, we'll discuss this in a bit more detail, di ba yan? Conflict of interest. So, anong halimbawa niyan? Since we are talking about weight management, at least with, with research on nutrition science, which is medyo magulo rin yan, they are pointing to sugar. Sugar as a possible factor in predicting for diabetes. So, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, and a whole slew of other health problems are very much correlated to sugar consumption. So kung mas mataas yung consumption mo ng sugar, mas malaki yung chance na meron ka ring diabetes and obesity. So paano kung ikaw yung negosyante na nagbebenta ka ng soft drinks? May ari ka ng ano, tubuhan. You you own a sugar industry, you have a sugar factory. So yung negosyo mo is at stake. And so sometimes these big companies, big sugar, big food companies, they will put out their own research that will say that Sugar can be part of a healthy diet. Sugar consumption has no relation to diabetes. They can come up with research na kunyari ganun yung data na lumalabas. So ngayon, paano mo malalang ako sinintama? Because they did research. They went through the scientific method as well. And these other researchers went through as well. Titignan mo ngayon kung ano yung methods nila. Ano ba yung ginawa nyo? Gagayahin namin. So kung pareho yung result dun sa kanila, eh di pwedeng mali pala yung una. Kung yung result pala eh pareho lang dun sa napag-usapan na na excessive sugar consumption is related to diabetes and obesity, then something is going on with their data. So yun yung tinatawag natin conflict of interest because your livelihood is at stake or whatever things, your beliefs are at stake. Which leads me to the next point of facts over feelings. So in that example, nutrition science is getting closer to this truth that excessive sugar consumption is very much related to diabetes and obesity. And that is the fact that we know for now. Does it account for the feelings of these people who have livelihoods? 
because of the study that was published, so na published na siya, yay! Nakita na ng madlang people, na basa na siya sa internet, di ba? So everyone, it has reached the whole world, yay! Everybody knows this information now. Yung mga may-ari ng factories ng sugar, yung mga soft drinks, nagbebenta ng soft drinks, they now see a decline in sales. Bakit? Kasi yung mga tao natakot na eh. Na ah, dahil pala sa matamis. Kung papairalin natin yung feelings natin, kawawa naman yung mga nagbebenta. Kawawa naman yung mga umaasa sa asukal bilang kanilang kabuhayan. Feelings yun. In the quest for the truth. Diba? In the quest for facts. Kung mabawasan yung sales ninyo, maraming matanggalan ng trabaho, I'm very sorry. But those are the facts. Doon mo makikita kung talagang yung research, walang conflict of interest. When they really publish kung ano yung result. So that's why, above all else, science is what we use to uncover the physical universe. Because if we look at Mother Nature, pag nakakita kayo ng documentary ng mga leon o yung mga cheetah na hinahabol yung mga antelope, tas nakuha yung baby, tas kinain yung baby, baby, tapos sinakal yung baby. <laughs> Tayo, yung feelings natin, ay, kawawa naman yung antelope, kinain ng cheetah. But what is the fact? The cheetah is a predator, kailangan niyang kumain para mag-survive. Yung antelope, na baby na yun, siguro talagang ang hina lang niya tumakbo. So, nahabol siya at napatay siya. So, kung may namatay, okay, yun talaga eh, kailangan mamatay para may mabuhay. Truth does not necessarily always mean it's always gonna be something that's good. Di ba yung sabi ni Al Gore, inconvenient truth. May mga katotohanan tungkol sa buhay na mahirap tanggapin. But it, it's still the truth. Ganon si science, ganon si nature. That's why science is used to explain nature. What does it mean to have a scientific mind? Now that we live in the digital age, in the sea of information, pwede ka lang mag-google, you can just search online, type almost anything and meron search result na lalabas. But the thing with Google is that it does not filter kung tama ba yung nakukuha mong information or hindi. So let's go back to the scientific method. In fact, in our day and age, di ba, ang swerte natin na for the most part, all we have to do is this. Yan lang. Di ba? Kung meron tayong na-observe at meron tayong katanungan, more often than not, there is already an answer. There's no need to give a possible explanation, no need to give your, or no need to conduct an experiment, no need to do this. Why? Because a lot of the scientists back in the day, you know, Einstein, Newton, Galileo, all of these people, they've done most of that already. Nagawa na nila yan. So tayo, ito na lang gagawin natin. And yet, kahit papano, lagana pa rin ng fake news. We share information na hindi totoo, it's not the truth. Yan na nga lang yung gagawin natin, pero nagkakamali pa rin tayo. Why? Because sometimes, you know, our feelings get in the way. We still have our biases. Kaya siguro lumalaganap din ng fake news. So what can we do on our part to make sure that the information that we find is actually reliable, it's accurate, and it's something that we can share? So if you want more context on this, para hindi na masyado humaba, no? I recommend that you watch the video on Star Talk. That's with Neil deGrasse Tyson and Chuck Nice, and they were talking about science literacy. How do we not fall for these fake information or misinformation? If we end on this note, sabi nga natin, everyone is science-minded until about five, six years of age. Observe nyo yung mga bata. Or tayo, nung bata tayo, ano bang ginagawa natin? Lahat dadamputin, lahat hawakan, lahat isusubo. And what is that that we are doing when we explore places, when we touch everything, when we try to put everything in our mouths? We are observing. And at the same time, we are asking, Ano to? Ano to? Pagkain ba to? And then you test. Is this food? I taste. Ay, it's not food. I therefore conclude it's not food. I put it down. I don't eat it. That's the scientific method in a child. And we all have that. The science in us is there. We just have to unleash it. How? We just have to keep observing. Don't stop observing. And more importantly, don't stop asking questions. Even about the information that we receive. Does this information make sense? The innate curiosity is there. And it's only when you stop asking that you've pretty much given up on the scientist in you.
that's it pansit and i hope you guys learned something about the scientific method its practical applications how it's very relevant in today's modern times i will definitely be putting up some recommendations some channels that you can check out to make sure that the information that we're getting is as sensible as possible so once again my name is rumble b and i thank you